All right, welcome back to another episode of the Cairo Candy Podcast. My name is Billy Sticker. And this is Matt Keenan. And uh, we're going to talk today about a question we get asked all the time. What niches work best when it comes to marketing on on social media? Uh, and a lot of people assume, you know, they see our ads that, you know, all we do is chiropractic. And that, that's not the case. Um you know, and Matt's been with us for several years now as one of our directors. Um, we see all kinds of campaigns that, you know, all kinds of different niches that chiropractics, chiropractors are doing in their office. Uh, and and we've seen success with really all of, all them. of them. Yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to break down the different campaigns and go over some key strategies that we've seen work with each one of these different niches. So uh, if there are different things that you do in your office, stay tuned because there's a great chance we're going to be talking about that particular niche, uh, you know, whether it's decompression, neuropathy, knee, weight loss. Uh, We're going to cover all these and more uh, in this episode. So um, Matt, why don't you start? What, What are some just key things with just chiropractic that we know works well? Well, chiropractic in general, obviously that's that's our main draw. Most of the time when we have a new client, we recommend starting with chiropractic, just general chiropractic, because with that, um, it kind of gives us a good sense of um, what the demographic is like and what we're working with, with other campaigns in general. Doesn't always 100% tell us um, what we can expect, but it gives us a good idea because that's what we're most used to. Um, but with chiropractic, campaigns in general, it's people love, and this is a little controversial for some chiropractors because they don't want to be known for cracking and popping, but the visual, visually adjustment videos do really well to generate engagement. And I know that for, for a lot of chiropractors um, that are working hard to not be known for just cracking and popping, they don't want to be known um, as, you know, just superficial surface level kind of chiropractors. But that you have to have some kind of grab. You have to get, you have to have something to bring them into your funnel. And then you can show them that you're different and what sets you apart. You know what I mean? So those, those are a really good start. Adjustment videos paired with educational videos is always a good, a good place to go. And then based on how people respond to them. And of course, some people aren't even going to like the cracking and popping videos, depending on the demographic. Sometimes I've seen it where um, a testimonial video will perform better. But in general, most of the time you want to start with some solid adjustment videos or and photos too, just solid pictures um, that show you as the doctor with your patients. Um, and also typically for um, videos and photos in general, you want to try to find a young, attractive female to be in the videos. That's, they just always perform better. Yeah, that's actually a great point. Uh, also, anything, you know, and you could be doing an exam, like a range of motion or something like that. Those can do well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember having two different clients, both in Australia, uh, both in the Brisbane area, but like total different parts of the city. And one campaign was crushing it. The other one wasn't doing very well. And I remember looking at both of these these ads and stuff. And uh, Rusty, my wife, came in. She's like, hey, what are you working on? And I said, hey, look at these. Look, this one's working great. This one isn't. And she said, well, the first thing I'm looking at is is just the images. I think this one, the one that wasn't working well, she goes, my first thought is, is this some type of weight loss ad? Simply because the patient was overweight. Mm. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I think you're right. She goes, now that's without me reading a headline or anything. And it's so important to remember first impressions. The first thing that we have to do is get them to stop scrolling, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And what's going to do that is the video or image. And so whenever they see that, that was the, her first impression is this lady's overweight. This is this some type of a weight loss campaign. And it was an older lady. So that's one of the reasons we say, if you can find somebody ideally that's fit in their thirties, that's female. I mean, typically most of your patients, 65 to 70% of your patient load is normally in females, that range. 35 and older. <laughs> They're the ones making the healthcare decisions. So um, yeah, so that's a, a great point is if you can find someone like that, 
to be, you know, one of your patients. Uh, another good piece of content is just an office tour. Right. One of the things that keeps people from coming in is they really don't know what to expect. So anything you can do to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit and let them see some smiling faces, know a little bit about, you know, just what to expect whenever they get there, it's going to help lower that barrier of entry and make it easier, you know, easier for them to come in. Uh, so going off of chiropractic, another big one we have everybody ask about is decompression. Because a lot of mm -hmm. people invest a lot of money in these decompression tables, and it doesn't have to be the chiropractor putting patients on decompression. So right. it could be a huge income stream for the office. Uh, so, so what do you see works well on decompression ads? Well, decompression ads, and with a lot of these niches, you want to show it off, right? You want to show off the table. What does it do? What does it look like? But don't just show them the table because it it can look like some kind of torture device. You know, there's some there's some table that someone's getting strapped into. Usually, I would I recommend photos and videos of staff members on the table and just talking about it. Some some of them I know the day, the tables can be loud when they're running, so um, don't have them you know, on or anything, but you could at least have your um, staff member strapped in, make sure they're smiling <laughs> so that it's not intimidating and weird. It doesn't look painful. Yeah. They're just smiling like, Hey, this is, this is my CA Laura. And then she's on the table and she's like, hi, you know, just something, something normal. This is, and this is what the de decompression table does. Explain it, make sure that it doesn't seem scary or intimidating anymore. It's like, this is going to give you so much relief. And then um, videos and photos of that. I mean, that's, that's decompression is usually, um, it can typically be easier to get good, um, a good number of leads than chiropractic because the visual of it is it's, it stops you. That's what helps you that it helps you stop scrolling immediately. Cause you're like, well, this person's on this table, what are they doing? And then they're like, Oh, it's actually can help my low back pain. Or if you have herniated disc or whatever, whatever it is that needs to be treated. And then we use those buzzwords that decompression helps treat in the ad text. So mainly the the visual representation of the decompression table um, that piques people's interest and then mentioning the symptoms um, that it treats in the ad text. Those are going to be the, the two main things. And I think it's also important to remember that it's not up to the patient to decide if they need a regular adjustment or decompression. Right. Right. That's your call. So our goal ideally is we just want to get people in your office. Mm -hmm. So all the ads do, this is simply bait. We're digging a pond. We're telling Facebook what fish to put in the pond. And then the ads are bait we're using to fish with to get people to come into your office. It's up to you on your day one and day two, you know, to find out what it is that they need. Exactly. And a lot of times it's just getting people in the door that helps them then do other things, uh, which that actually leads me. I'm going to, let's talk about massage back mm -hmm. in the day when I was still doing all the campaign, you know, I was wearing all the hats in the business. I remember we had an office that was a multiple seven figure practice. They did just about every different niche you can think of in there. And we still have lots of offices like this. They do all kinds of different niches. Uh, well, we started doing a massage campaign. And they had a separate business page just for their massage business. And so it wasn't like, hey, if you get a an adjustment, you get a free massage. It wasn't, and, and those campaigns can work. We've done those, yeah. Yeah, we've done a bunch of those. But what we did with this particular office is it was a, and we tested several different prices. And I remember what worked best was giving them the option. It's like, uh, hey, we're doing this special and you can come in for, a 30 minute massage for $20 or a, th or a 60 minute massage for 30. So it was like, they see 20 bucks for massage and they think, Oh yeah. And then they're like, well, hang on a second for $30. I can do an hour massage. And the doctor, his goal was he paid his, his uh, massage therapist 20 bucks an hour. He just wanted to cover that. Uh, but he also said, look, once they come in and they see how big we are and that we do weight loss and that Everything we do, that you have to offer, yeah, cover all these different things in our office. We've got this huge team and everybody's happy. It's a great environment. I just need to get them in. So that ad ran for 
probably a year and a half, and it generated leads at a dollar ninety a lead. Like the massage, entire time. Massage does that. Massage campaigns can be very successful. It was crazy. And so he ended up having to hire more massage therapists. But what he did is he would bonus his massage therapist uh, 20 or 30 bucks for every appointment they scheduled for something else. So, for example, you know, they're giving the massage saying, look, there's only so much I can do here. You got something going on with your neck. I really recommend you see our chiropractor. And if they book that appointment, the massage therapist got a bonus and it worked incredibly well because the goal is the goal in advertising is not to sell them on your services. It's to get them to take the next step. I and mean, this mm. is marketing one-on-one. The goal of the image or the video is to get them to stop scrolling. Then we want them to read the headline. We want them to read the text. We want to create interest. And then from there, we want them to schedule an appointment. From mm. then, we want them to show up for the appointment. Then we want them to actually listen to you, right? It, we're not trying to sell them on why they need chiropractic the very, very first time they see you. We're trying to walk them down a path. It's the same thing with email marketing. Like trying the to first hold their thing hand they look, down the funnel. You're right. The first thing they look at is who's the email from, not even the subject line. You know, then they look at the subject line and the goal of this subject is to get them to open the email. And then mm. your first line of the email is to get them to read the second line, right? You're trying to walk yeah. them down a path. And it's the same thing with marketing. So the same thing, what we're doing online, we're just trying to bring them down a path. Um, so anytime you can get something that's a yes offer, so that's why massage works so well is, you know, if you went to the mall and went to the food court or just somewhere that there's a lot of people and you stood up on the table and said, who in here wants a free chiropractic adjustment? You might have five to 10% of the people raise their hand. But if you said, Hey, who in here wants a free massage? Everyone's hands go up. You're going to have tons <laughs> of hands go up because it's such a yes offer. So anytime you can kind of incorporate a yes offer into your thing, it's going to do really, really well. Right. Um, and in general too, it's um, massage therapy goes into a slightly different context for people as well, because chiropractic, not everyone, part of, part of our job is to help educate people in chiropractic care and you and your community as, as a chiropractor, but um, not everybody sees chiropractic as necessary. People are skeptical about it. Whereas massage therapy, everyone, everyone believes in massages. Everybody wants a massage. So it's, it can be a lot easier to sell at times but it's a good way to get people into your door. But I know that not everybody has a massage therapist in their office, so yep. get one. <laughs> <laughs> another big camp or another niche that is extremely profitable that a lot of our doctors are doing uh, is neuropathy. So let, let's, uh, I'll have you talk about neuropathy some. Yeah, so neuropathy, the main thing, obviously you want to make sure that you're age demographics are set up correctly because you don't want to be targeting 25 year olds for neuropathy. That's not going to be your, your target, but um, for neuropathy, that can, that can be something else that definitely needs. I mean, all of them need visual representation, but um, especially for neuropathy, it needs a little bit more um, explanation for people as well. Now um, I, st I still like to target um, for our retargeting audience, we usually um, target younger audiences so that they can, um, people who may be caretakers for their parents, you know, it, we're, we're going, we'll target as low as, you know, like 35, 40 um, for, for their age, because some people may be looking at these ads for their parents and such. But in general, for neuropathy, it's also important to show what kind of um, device you use because there are a lot of different kinds and we we use stock images when we don't have something from our clients but we like to tell them like hey we want you to show what you use and explain it you know it's it makes a very easy visual aid as as a chiropractor you start the video and say hey um, this device helps with neuropathy let me tell you how easy opener and then immediately they want to know about it because whether it's um, a glove or some, sometimes it's just a treatment. I, I've had some clients that um, it's all like self-treatment. So they, um, they teach them how to treat their own um, neuropathy. So in any, in any case, there's a lot of different 
um, styles that people like to, a lot of different approaches, I should say. And so you want to make sure that your approach is clear with, right. with neuropathy. Yeah. And then once again, the main thing they're looking for is we want to tell them, Hey, there are other options. If you feel hopeless mm-hmm. when it comes to neuropathy, you know, if your doctor's giving you gabapentin and it's just not working, there are options that that are working really, really well. And once again, this is where testimonial videos and stuff can work too. Uh, and so letting them know, hey, there is now available a breakthrough treatment for neuropathy in our town. Let me tell you about it. Uh, yeah. It really gets people's attention. And one of the things that, that's important to know, and whether this is Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, you know, we're talking about these platforms. And it's good to know the different demographics that are on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's one thing about who's producing content and then who's consuming the content. So even on TikTok, we've got a a doctor in Austin that does a lot of neuropathy. He doesn't even do Facebook and Instagram. The only thing he does is TikTok and it works extremely well for him. But he's been extremely consistent putting out videos when it comes to neuropathy. Right. And we had heard years ago that one of the biggest demographics as far as consumers of TikTok are people 50 and older, which really sounded surprising. Yeah. Uh, people assume that it's just, you know, 21 and younger. Yeah. And those are the ones making the content. Yeah. But a lot of people 50 and older. And I remember Brady pointing out to me that my dad recently passed away, but he's like, you know, Papa's been sending me TikToks for the past several years. My dad was in his 70s. And he did. We used to rodeo growing up. And so he would send us these rodeo TikToks and, uh, and he was in his seventies, you know? So you're wherever, whoever you're trying to target, there's ways we can target them. It's just a matter of coming up once again, with the right content, with the right bait that we can put on the hook to put in the right ponds. Uh, well, also one one more thing for neuropathy, I would say that one of my clients used is before and after photos, like of the I, I think it's like the thermal imaging of like the the blood flow, you know, the improvement to just to show like this is what this is what um, yeah, our patient was dealing function. with beforehand. Yeah, the nerve. I'm yeah, I'm not. I can't I can't remember exactly what it what it was called. So forgive me, but. Um, the before and after photos of their patient to show the actual improvement is is a big deal too. Instead of just saying, "Oh yeah, we treat neuropathy because some people they've they've gotten bad treatments that didn't work," and so you want to if they're if they're older and they've been dealing with this for a long time, chances are they've tried a few things that haven't worked for them. So having something like that and the testimonial video that says, "Hey, this doctor really really works. I tried this, this, and this, and then I came to." Dr. Billy sticker (laughs) or whatever. And he was able to treat me and I feel so much better. I'm much more functional. My quality of life has improved. That's what people want to hear. Yeah. Cause what they're thinking is, you know, like, is this, does this really work? And is it going to work for me? Is it easy? Is it affordable? Mm -hmm. Right. These are some of the things that they're thinking. Uh, But first off, if they don't believe that it can actually work, it doesn't matter if it's affordable. Like they don't care. They first want to know, is That's this going to work? Year. Is it going to work for me? And then we'll talk about, you know, the finances and stuff. And that's something you don't even want to cover on the ad anyway, because no. we're, we're walking, we want to get them in the door, right? That's the next step. Uh, and then there's, you know, so we have stuff for neuropathy. Uh, and then even there's campaigns and stuff we can run based on specific equipment that you may have in your office. Um, like, stem wave or shock wave, you know, these right. different types of tools, we've seen those work really well. Uh, why don't you talk about some of those campaigns? Yeah, those those can be exciting because there's there's um there's an excitement, a draw to it because people are a little bit more unfamiliar with it. And it looks pretty cool. You know, like the shockwave devices, um, they're usually just a little handheld device with a wire and they just see them like rubbing it in on certain places. And um, if the the video has volume, then it makes this like weird shocking sound, you know, because it's I'm um, sending sound waves, yeah, the, the clicking noise. Yeah, the little the clicking. That's a that's a better way to describe it. But those typically do really well, especially photos, videos of this device. They're like, wow, this looks state of the art. This is this is brand new. But then when you list everything that it helps with. I mean, it's, it's the two, it's the two together. You know, you can't, you can't just have a good video that shows off the device without 
clear ad text that explains right. it, you know, you can't. And then if you have clear ad text that explains it, but then you don't really have the device, they have no concept of what this looks like. Am I going to be put in a, you know, in, in a room or am I, is it just like a little, does, is there any electricity in it? They don't know. So you have to make sure that the ads are clear and concise so that they know what it treats, how it works and why it, and how it would actually benefit them. I mean, the same, it's, sorry. Yeah, going go back it. to the formula, it stops the scroll mm -hmm. and it creates interest, right? So they, they start researching it and then we want them to know, Hey, you're having shoulder pain this can help your shoulder pain, right? You, know, you want to speak directly to, and so that's where, why it is important. I remember, uh, you know, doing some different stem cell and PRP campaigns and, and having doctors before saying, we just want to spend, you know, we just want to promote stem cell. Well, okay. Nobody necessarily just wants stem cell, right? right? They want their knee pain gone, you know, in how you do that. Yeah. That's one thing, but what's going to get their attention is, Hey, We've got to break breakthrough treatment for knee pain. This is what we're doing. So right. Matt's got a great point. You you've got to speak to both. Just because you have really cool equipment, if it doesn't tell them what what pain they have that you might be able to help with it, you know what itch you can scratch with it, then it it's not going to do as good. So you've got exactly. to have yeah, you've got to have and, both. But we, sorry, go ahead. Go, it's, go ahead. and sometimes with that. Um, some some campaigns may do better as a conversions campaign, meaning um, instead of typically, you know, a lead form campaign is what we default to. Meaning, um, if someone's if someone's scrolling on Facebook and they come across an ad, they click on it to sign up, and then it immediately takes them to a lead form. You know, name, email, phone number, and then from there, it might take them to a landing page where they schedule an appointment. But a conversions ad, and when they click on the ad. It doesn't take them to a simple Facebook lead form. It takes them to your landing page, that, which is a great opportunity for you to have more information about whatever it is you're trying to sell. Because before, you know, if, if the ad was, was good enough to get them to click on it, then you want your landing page to really send it home. So your landing page is going to have information. That's when you can even have a little bio with a doctor. I love to include um, a doctor bio in the landing page at some point so that they, if they're not fully sold, they're like, okay, this is the doctor. It's a good professional photo. Here's his little bio and keep that part brief. It doesn't have to be like this long thing about all of his credentials and everything. Um, and it can have um, testimonials of, of patients. If you don't, if you're not using a testimonial for the ad itself, then have little testimonials, have reviews of people who have had good experiences with the doctor. Landing pages are a great opportunity to have a lot more information. You want to put the um the sign up form, you know, at the top, of course. You know, you want that to be the first thing that they see, but you want them to be able to scroll and have other information to answer their questions if they have them. Yep. And testimonials. Reviews, tons of reviews is good to put on there. Mm -hmm. uh, just builds that social acceptance. Uh so yeah, great point. Another one that uh, we've struggled getting approved in the past, but we're seeing it get approved a lot more is weight loss. Yes, weight loss is, it was it was a beast for a while because there are a lot of um, guidelines and rules um, that we accept in order to you know run ads on Facebook. A lot of their policies are very specific against um, assuming uh, an ailment on someone or like assuming that you're, um, audience is fat or, you know, they don't, they don't want any, anything to feel like a personal attack on anyone. And so we can't specifically target, um, that, but the way that we get around it is, you know, we, we can't use specific words, right? They don't, they don't usually like it when we use, um, words like semaglutide or so, sometimes it gets approved. Sometimes it doesn't because it is ultimately, you know, this weird algorithm and the, the algorithm sometimes accepts things and sometimes it doesn't, but, um, we've gotten around a lot of the um, hurdles that it presents us, but I think I think things have kind of relaxed. Like the main things you don't, you can never do before and after photos. It doesn't matter, you know, with, you know, someone who is bigger and then someone who um, lost a lot of weight, you can never do those. Whether it's in a video that flashes from one image to the next, it could be two images next to each other, whether it's a carousel, those are never going to work. But what you can do instead of before and afters, you can just have a photo of the after 
and then put in the image, um, I lost this much, this much weight. And those work really well. I, I have a doctor in um, Lincoln, Nebraska that does that instead. Instead of doing a bunch of before and after photos, he does like updates. He posts updates about certain clients, um, certain patients that don't they don't mind. They're like, hey, can, can we use this to help other people lose weight? They're like, yeah. So then we'll just take a photo with them. And um, then it says so-and-so's lost um, 90 pounds so far. And then you know, the next month it says 120 pounds down, you know, and then that's, and that's encouraging. And then I run both of those ads. So then people are seeing both of them and it's like, oh, wow, they lost 90. Oh, they're still losing weight. But it's also, it's also important for people to know what your weight loss treatment is, not just lose weight, but some people may, may not want, you know, an injection. So you might have um, a lipo light bed or red light therapy, contour light, you know, whatever it is that you have. And then we promote that as like a tanning bed for weight loss or, you know, what, whatever it is. Cause sometimes it's just like the wraps with the lights, yeah. but sometimes it's like a whole bed that you lay down in. And those, but, you know, that's another great example though, of getting somebody's attention whenever they see that and, you know, uh, lipo treatment now available in or lipo alternative now available mm -hmm. in Houston, Texas, it gets people's attention uh, that a lot of times, you know, that'll get them in the door and then you sell them on whatever weight loss package, nutrition, right. like wh whatever it is that includes so many sessions of, you know, of the red light treatment or, or whatever it may be. Um, and that one you need to get with weight loss. You, that one, you have to be the most creative when promoting, honestly, because it doesn't like certain words. And so it'll, it'll disapprove the ads several times before it actually approves them. Every time I do a weight loss campaign, it, it, dis it rejects some of the ads. And then, and then I have to like go in and critique things, tweak things. Sometimes it, it won't let you use, you know, like the word Ozempic or semaglutide, but you can, you know, kind of hint around to it, or you can even like make up your own words sometimes and people will know exactly what you're talking about. You can use emojis like the needle emoji, things like that. They're like, Oh, he's talking about some glutide and people know how ads work. You know, they yeah. know, they know that you can't say certain things. And so they get what you're trying to put down. So uh, another cool image, case. another image we had one of our uh, offices do is instead of a before and after picture, they did the after picture. And instead of just it saying how much they lost, they had those, big oh, yeah. things of fat, like, Perfect. you know, 20 pounds of fat and this lady's holding 20 pounds of fat. She's smiling really big. Yeah. You know, I'm down 20 pounds. I'm down 30 pounds. And so it's just them holding this. Uh, but those ads are that. Doing really, really, really well. Um, you can and, buy those fat. Get approved. You can get those fat chunks on Amazon. <laughs> you can buy fat on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's another great one. Uh, another, another one that we've talked about briefly is knee you know, mm -hmm. knee campaigns. That's if you can just say, Hey, uh, knee replacement, you know, knee surgery alternative now available. Uh, it gets people's attention. Nobody wants to have knee surgery, no. but so many people feel that that's what they need to, because they, they go to the surgeon, right. And to a hammer, everything looks like a nail, you know, a surgeon, yeah. of course they want to operate. That's what they do. Uh, but to let them know, Hey, there's actually a breakthrough treatment we have, whether it's laser that you're doing in your office or whatever. Uh, once again, this comes back to being able to promote the tool and promote the treatment, right? The, the results right. that they're going to get with it, being able to do both. Um, right. So Avoiding surgery is a huge selling point because somebody would much rather spend $47 on this treatment that might work as opposed to thousands of dollars and getting into like medical debt or a surgery. You know what I mean? They'd much yeah. rather exhaust other options before getting to that point. Yeah. Or, or spend 2,500 on a knee pain treatment plan right. that they, they feel pretty confident it's going to work instead of actually having to go and under the knife and, and actually have surgery that they're exactly. crossing their fingers hoping you know, that it's going to work. So uh, I think when, when it all comes down to it, is there, or, or s we've seen success with all of these different campaigns, all of these different niches we've seen work well, it comes down to figuring out, okay, what's the best audience 
we can target. We have to get creative on the imaging, the videos, the text, the headlines. Uh, there's all these pieces of the puzzle that that we have to figure out what's going to be the best combination in your market to get the best results. Like we always want you to get the best results possible as quick as possible. Right. And, you know, it's not like, like it doesn't do us any good. Like we really want you to get the best results. So if, if you're doing these on your own, go for it. Hopefully we've given you some ideas, some things that you can tweak. Uh, but remember this, we say this all the time. It's a Grant Cardone quote, best known beats best. So the more you're promoting yourself, the more content you're getting out to your community and then building those retargeting audiences. So they're seeing you over and over and over and over again, all the different things you do, people start to know who you are. You become this local authority, this local celebrity. And then when you have some kind of new patient offer, they're saying yes to you, not yet. Yes. To some discounted offer, even though the, the offers and stuff work, we want to promote you. We want, you know, you want people saying yes to you. Uh, so if, if this is something that you would like help on, whether you just want our team to look and see what you're doing now and maybe give you some pointers, you can schedule a call with our team and we can do that. Uh, or if you want to work with us, schedule a call. You can go to chirocandy.com. You can schedule a call there. Or maybe you've worked with us in the past. Uh, I don't know of any other agency that's been around in the chiropractic profession as long as we have. We're almost 10 years now. We've been doing this. I've seen a lot of new companies, you know, we see them all the time kind of come and go, but we've planted our flag. We've been here for a while. We're not going anywhere. Uh, But even if you worked with us in the past, you know, that's one of the things I'm proud of. Every single month we have returning clients, you know, they went somewhere else, tried it, and then they come back every They always come back. They always do. Yeah, we see that happen. So even if you've worked with us in the past and you want to work with us again, uh, we've got some great things going on and we'd love to help you make the biggest impact in your community that uh, that you can. So that's it. A- any closing thoughts from you? No, honestly, I just want to put, I, I just want to push more that you still need to make videos. Videos are always are always going to be the thing that we push for. They work. You have to, you it have to tell the story so well. and that's part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you get better. You know, it, that's one of the things we, we actually have some training that, that our clients go through and it's real basic, but don't think you're making a video for everybody in your town. A lot of times what makes doctors hesitant on making videos is they don't want to be judged by other healthcare professionals, not just other chiropractors, just other medical doc- They and you may not even realize it, but that's what you're really afraid of. Quit thinking of that. You just think, I am making this video because one of my favorite patients is sending in a referral and they had a question about neuropathy. And so I'm making this video for them or I'm making this knee pain video or wait, well, whatever it is, you're making this video for one person and smile in the video. And so there's some things that we can help, you know, help you along the way, even show you tons of samples and examples and things like that. Uh, And that, that is one of the things that we say work the best is just simply producing content. So, all right, that's it. We will see you guys next time on another episode of the Cairo Candy podcast. See ya.